us what you're doing with airtime. Um, we have created an aircraft that we designed to go anywhere, do anything. You see a nice spot that looks like a good fishing spot, you plop it down right there and go for it. And that's what we're trying to do with this aircraft is go anywhere, do anything, have some fun with flying. We're trying to get aviation out to everybody. What was the modus operandi behind building this airplane this way? So this airplane has a fantastic track record over the years, but over the years we've seen the potential failure points and we've seen the way our pilots and customers are using aircraft. We've seen ways to improve and over the years we've beefed up the floats, we've made them stronger, we've changed the design, we've changed the landing gear from chromoly steel to titanium landing gear now, so we're, we're not dealing with the saltwater corrosion anymore that we were in the past. We've got a fantastic craft that can operate from any water condition, any land condition, it's built like a tank, but flies like a Cadillac, and that's what we're kind of going for. Comfort, durability, reliability, we've got all our bases covered. What is the transition like from your standpoint from regular grade A boring brand aviation to a trike? What do they need to know? What does it take? What are you learning in teaching these people to transition to a whole different way to fly? Well, I'm a, I'm a great example of that because I started as a fixed wing pilot. Um, I came down to Fort Walton and did a demo flight in one of these and I was like, this is amazing. This is what I want to do. Simple transition. Um, if you think about it as, oh, complicated reverse controls, that gets confusing to some guys. But if you think about it as you're flying the wing, it takes all the complication out of the equation. You push up, the nose goes up, increases your angle of attack. You pull in, the nose goes down, decreases your angle of attack. If you think about it in nose principles, it makes flying it simple. It's very intuitive, it's very straightforward. You feel everything that the wing is doing, so it makes it very easy to, to feel what the plane is doing. At the same time though, amphibious operations is an abusive way to treat an aircraft. How are they holding up? They're holding up great. Like I said, we got titanium landing gear, we've got a powder coated aluminum. In the innovation preview video, we did mention that we've improved the way we're powder coating our floats. Over the years, we've seen how salt water can be completely relentless and even powder coat can fall off over the years. So we've changed our procedure, we've changed our way of powder coating to improve it and strengthen it and resist any potential corrosion. So for somebody trying to, to go the simple inexpensive route. What's a part 103 solution going to cost these days? Um, we're, we're selling the Explorer for around $21,000 um, and again that changes with the motor, that changes with the uh, configuration that you get. Uh, in fact I just had a customer walk up here and said, man this thing's cheaper than my Harley. So we're making it so that people can either get a new toy that they never thought possible. And uh, like you said, Part 103 takes away some of those restrictions that might have kept somebody from going through the process of getting their sport pilot's license to fly a Signet. Now anybody can fly, with some training of course, but, but yeah, it makes it way more, way more affordable and way easier to get into it. Now the two-seat LSA configuration, we're used to LSA spending, you know, having to spend a hundred grand or more for some of these, so this is a hundred grand, right? Uh, no, it's actually uh, half that. You can get two of these. <laughs> well, not really. It's 57000 is the starting price for the 80 horsepower Rotax, and then we've got about 63 starting for the 100 horsepower Rotax. So we go up from there depending on bells and whistles and what kind of paint job you want and we've got a laundry list of options you can add and we really work with the customer. We tailor it to whatever the customer is looking for. Now you have a training operation to climatize and accommodate people who have not been weight shift pilots in the past? Yes sir, we sure do. We've got a training facility down in Fort Walton Beach and Michael Percy, the owner of the company, is also an FAA examiner so we can take you from zero to hero. We can do the flight training, we can do the certification and everything and get people in the air. Looks like you got a phenomenal little product there, and I can't wait to try it out. And we thank you for spending time with AeroTV. Yes, sir. I thank you very much for the opportunity, Jim. And we, uh, whenever you're ready to come down, we'll make that happen. AeroTV is brought to you by. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Are you stall smart? Ever since Orville and Wilbur took to the skies, pilots have been taught that the more airspeed you have, the better off you are. But over the last 100 plus years, we've learned that's not always the case. Take stalls for example. The common belief is that if you have sufficient airspeed, the aircraft won't stall. The fact is, an airfoil always stalls at the same critical angle of attack in relation to the relative airflow, regardless of airspeed, configuration, or weight. Learn more at AspenAvionics.com.